third guttural nephal. Now we'll turn to the third gutturals, and this is really a minor category. In fact, Ross doesn't even have it in his tables at the end of the book, because it's not important to memorize. Um, what do I say here? Only slight changes in the vowels, okay? So the, the guttural at the end, right here, the guttural sitting here is going to change vowels at the end. And so let's see what happens in the nephal. We'll look at the nephal and a couple more. Can't you remember which ones right now? So nephal, I think this is my only slide here. Guttural changes the tsere to a patach. So we have a tsere here, yipakeid, it becomes yeshalach. Okay, or hippakeid, the imperative. Remember the imperative in the nephal has this hey there? Hippakeid becomes hishalach. So all this changes this last vowel. The guttural likes a vowels, and so it changes the tsere to an a vowel, a patach. But most of your signs here for your uh, nephal are still there. You still have the hitic, the um, dagesh forte, and the comets. Now, my little mnemonic here, it a a, it a a, and then look for the dagesh. It works here, it falls apart here a little bit because you don't have the third component. Um, but even in the regular paradigm, you don't always have, you don't always have that either. So uh, it's not a, it's not really much loss here. Your your signs are still here for the nephal, and this won't create problems when you read.